Good afternoon guys. I had a uh, little part I threw up on the bench here a couple of days ago to start making a pattern off, off of and I thought I would share it with you very quickly. Um, it is the multi-stop which is a multi-position carriage stop for the little atlas you know primarily for the production lays. Now um, I think Atlas's number is 690 on these, and they call it a multi-stop. I thought I would share these a little bit, or share the disassembly of these, so you can see what's involved with them. These are a not real common part, and I see there is one on Flea Bay right now that they want 200 and some dollars for, which is way overpriced. Now, I lusted after one of these for quite a while and finally came across one here a year or so ago is where I got this one and I got a decent price on it. I think I paid about $80 for it. Um, they normally should go or will go in that $100 range. Much more than that and I probably would not buy in. I've passed on quite a few of them over the years that they wanted $100 or more for. So, and my reproductions are probably going to be in that hundred dollar range and they may be an aluminum casting rather than a cast iron. I may not go to the go to the time and expense of doing these in cast iron. Um, lusted after one for quite a while. The reality is it's not that great an attachment. It works well. I use it every time I run the little turret lathe but I usually only use two or maybe three positions on the stop. So it does take up a lot of real estate and if you've got anything else on your, you know, if you've got a little short bedded lathe like I've got this one, which is intentional, there's, this takes up a lot of space between the, the adjustment rods and everything. Now I could put shorter adjustment rods in, there, rods in there, but these are the factory length rods and they're about, what, well oh, they're actually about four and a half inches long. So by the time you, for the little parts that I turn, you know, right outside the, the end of the collet, why by the time I get this on there I've usually got them backed up pretty much all the way or almost all the way to the back and then I've got this sticking out the back side so that can create some clearance issues with stuff. Anyway it works well, it does pretty good um, and they're probably going to be in that hundred dollar range is about what they're worth. So more than that I wouldn't do it. Now there is one listed on Flea Bay that they want two hundred and some dollars for and it is not original and if you want to go back and look at that one why it was listed as of today which is what March 15th I think 14th 15th must be the I don't know we better look and see what day it is oh, I guess it's the 16th today so I noticed it was listed this morning so anyway the differences on them the one that you see there is is kind of butchered up a little bit now there's no there's no clamp plate with it which is not a big deal in and of itself but when you look at the if you all I'll, what I remember off the top of my head I'll share right now with you so that so that you can go back and look and know what you're looking at with these now this one is original I believe this one is all original so what they've done is there's some been some inserts put in here. These are normally a what these are about a three eighths is uh, what the threads are in these three eighths course. And uh, the one that's listed on Flea Bay has inserts put in there. They're pinned and then it's been re-drilled and tapped. So they've done something goofy with it there. That's not original to it. The other thing that they've done is these are the proper locking nuts. And they're uh, turned and knurled, you know, set up to set your stop length. Uh, the one that's on the, the little auction site listing just has nuts stuck on this side, and they're saying they give you a wrench with it. Well, that's not original. You know, that's not, uh, that's not the way they're supposed to be. So those are the main two things I noticed about it, and that would, that would knock the crap out of it from being original anyway. So basically what we're doing, and I'm just going to make a casting pattern off of this, and you've seen mine, I added a little a little handle that goes on the goes on the end here I run it up and it's just easier to turn because these tend to get a little bit stiff so anyway all they are and and they seem to be kind of mysterious because we really don't know what's inside them but they're really pretty simple you got a nut locking them locking the outer side uh, this is about two and a quarter I think yeah this outside you're seeing here is two and a quarter inch diameter and the 
the diameter of the main casting is about two and three quarters of an inch of ZOD on them. So anyway, they're tapped on this side. So if we back those out, back those out, they all have to come out. I guess I could have done this off camera so we didn't have the, the drama of me unthreading six quarter twenty threaded rods. Maybe I'll add a part of that out. Maybe I'll get the pleasure of seeing me unthread all six of them. And we've got a 5 16 bolt that runs through the center of everything. Washer on the back side. And there we've got a little thin plate, eighth inch probably. Those are just clearance. That's your retainer plate on the back. Got an index pin so it locks in position there. And then it should just slide right out of there. There's going to be a detent in there. There we go. Yep, in the bottom there's a detent ball. Ball and spring down the bottom. So what they did is where your oiler goes in the top, they drilled all the way through for that detent ball and spring to be in there. And it's just recessed lightly on both sides, just to hold it hold it centered up. Got a little bit of a relief cut on both sides there. Then our main body has six position detents cut in it. You know that corresponds with each of the. So when you rotate it up, it locks in position. And there, you know, in between each of the the way it's set up. So. Not a not a real complicated design, but you don't get to see inside them very often. So I thought you'd find that a little bit interesting to know how they how they go together and what they've done. So detent ball and the spring. And I would speculate, although I don't know for certain, if we'd go back and look at the detent ball and spring. There's our spring. It's going to be used on something else. That thing of Atlas and their universal designs. And it looks like that's probably about a 45 degree angle off of the off of the base, I'm guessing. degree that way and each of our detents is is halfway between so pretty simple design uh, but we'll make up a casting pattern for that one and uh, produce a few of these you know they're not everybody's gonna have to decide for themselves if this is something that's really worth having if you look at it it's got quite a bit of draft going off this way so it was cast here see a little bit of a parting line there so we were cast just like this, little boss on the bottom, whether it was cut as a, or molded as a two-piece pattern, if it was, yeah, it was, uh, it was two parts. It was probably cast on a match plate, which is what I'll do with them too. And, uh, anyway, pretty simple little design. Pretty cool. Limited usefulness. Anyway, thought you might find it useful. Don't, uh. Don't overpay for these stuff. This stuff on flea bay. So that's all there is to it. The base is basically the same base as is on the the single position stop, except they've uh, added our piece out here, you know, for it to ride against. And uh, otherwise, they're pretty much the same. Hopefully, you find it useful. Comments, suggestions, leave them in the comment section for me below. And thanks for taking the time to watch.